Hey everybody, I'm Carol Rourke at Carol Rourke Studios and I'm here to welcome you to the fourth week of working on painting the Delta landscape. We are still sheltering in place at home, so we have a lot of time on our hands, a lot of boredom on our hands, but that's a great time to paint if you're already a painter or to try painting if, if it's something you've always wanted to to learn and to get a better understanding of. And there's so many opportunities for learning out there right now, right from the comfort of our home. Um, the internet is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So last week we began to work on our land area some. We had built in our clouds the week before and our grisaille tonal painting on the first week. This week, we're just going to kind of work the painting as a whole, making adjustments here and there as needed, um, bringing some finishing touches in as well. So, for those of you who have are just tuning in and have missed the first few weeks, you might want to go back to review, but I will start out, like always, going over what I have on my palette. So, I have titanium white, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, cad red light, cadmium orange, alizarin permanent, greenish umber, viridian green hue, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and radiant violet, which I've told you in the past, radiant violet is a very pale Purple made by Gamblin, but I love using it as a tint in a form of a cool white. Um, so I use it to mix in with a lot of other colors to, to knock them down here and there. Okay, so brushes I'm using today are um, a number eight hog bristle flat from Traquel and a number seven evergreen from Rosemary. Um, and this is a short flat or a bright. Uh, this one is a lot softer, but it still has some strength to it. Um, it's, the hog bristle is more of a workhorse, but I'm, I'm a big fan of bristle brushes. I just like them. But I do like a little bit softer brush as I kind of get toward the, the more finishing details um, in my paintings. So I'm just kind of looking at the overall picture here and... Um, deciding where I wanted to go, where I need adjustments. I know I wanted to lighten this just a hair. I want to lighten down here at my horizon a hair. Um, I'm going to come in and still hold on to this mass, but refine it just a bit. Same thing with the ground here. And I may stick some of this bushy stuff in the foreground as we go. I also think I'm going to warm slightly the the far back mass line of trees um so in fact i think i'm going to start there i'm going to come down here and work on the sky and then go into this far group of trees so that i can work the edge of those group of that mass into my lighter sky while they're both wet so i'm going to just grab a little bit of cadmium orange tiny bit of cad yellow medium and some white. Now, it's not quite this bright down in there, so I'm going to take just a little dot of my radiant violet. If you don't have radiant violet, you can take titanium white and dioxinine violet and tint down to get to that point. So that just knocks it down a little bit. I think I'm going to even make it just a little bit pinker. I'm going to throw a little permanent alizarin in there. It's bright. I mean, it's light, but it's it's not too, too light. So I like to make these little pops of note color just to check before I go crazy putting it all on there. And once I kind of get that in check, then I know if it's something I want to pull further. And I kind of like this using the evergreen. So I'm just going to bring a little light down into my very bottom right at the horizon line. And you'll notice that that instantly makes this, these masses of the horizon line trees a little darker. Um, so 
I don't need to darken those up, but I might warm them just a little bit where this glow from the sunset is, is hitting on them. So while I've got this color, I'm gonna pull it in here and there where I may want a little more light. My sky is dry now, so these little hints of color will sit on top a little better maybe than they did when we were working on the sky a couple of weeks ago. And that's the advantage of studio versus plain air. When I go out and I paint plain air, a lot of times I'm not able to get some of the, the vibrant tones I want because I start getting things a little wet. But it's still so important to study those outside, to study those notes. And a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm painting a plain air piece and I know that, that okay, I've gone as far as I can with it, it's too wet, then I'll just stop. And I'll come back the next time the conditions are the same. In other words, if I'm working on a sunny day at, say, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, then I'm going to come back to that scene at the same time and the same type of sun that I was in there before. Um, and that just, just builds you such a strong visual knowledge. Is it work? Yeah, but is it worth it? Absolutely. So I'm just hitting a little bit of this peachy tone here and there. Still want to hang on to the some of the color I had before, but just brightening it up a bit here and there. Okay. As far as my mass of trees go, I'm going to keep the same color on my brush. I'll cool it down with a little ultramarine blue. I'm going to add just a little bit more orange to it, which is going to gray it too. Because that back wall of trees is a cool tone. So I want to, but I just, we've got this late afternoon light that's hitting the tops of these trees. So even though it's gray, I'm going to put a little burnt sienna and a little alizarin in there as well. I'm just going to let some of that tone drift. Now, I don't want a hard edge up here on the top. So I'm going to bump that into the sky color that I laid in just a minute ago. A little more alizarin. Mainly keeping this right at the top. It's amazing how everything has turned so green and since we started this painting. All of these trees are now in their spring clothes and so it's a completely different scene. But that's what I like about the landscape is you, you it's constantly changing so it's never boring. So I'm going to deepen this color a little bit with a little more ultramarine blue, just a hit down in the base. If it gets a little too blue, I'm going to knock it down with some burnt sienna, which will mute it slightly, gray it slightly. But again, I don't want to linger down here too much. I don't want to remember my story. My story is this sky. This is just things that go with the sky. Okay, so I'm going to leave that alone. Might just dust through some of the edges that I want to soften even a little more with my bristle brush. And then I'm going to come back up to my, um, my clouds. All right, I like this little strip of color, which is a little bit of viridian and a ton of white. I actually wouldn't mind opening up my clouds a little more over there. So I'm going to mix a little of that color up. Viridian Hue is a mixture of Viridian and Thalo Blue Green. And I use it, I don't use it in greens hardly ever, but I do use it in skies a lot, almost as a warm blue. 
And so I'm just going to take a little of this color and I'm going to open another sky hole or two. I just like that little bit of atmosphere there. It just takes a little bit of the strong, strong weight off those clouds. Gives us a little air through there. Yeah, I like that better. And so, don't ever be afraid to make little adjustments. I mean, when, when we started the sky, I mentioned it wasn't finished. It was just a good indication of where we wanted to go with it. And now, we're taking that a step further. So where this sky comes through, it's a, it's a strong color. Now, I wouldn't take this color up into here because our sky cools as it comes higher. So you want this warmer blue tone to stay in the bottom of your sky. I'm going to come back into my same mixture that I started with and I'm going to make a little more of it. So I'm going to do my burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, which gives me kind of a gray tone to work with. I'm pulling some of that peachy tone in there and pull just a hint of alizarin back in there and then a good bit of the radiant violet. And I'm gonna cut some of this in half. So I like what I've got here, but it's really lighter than I want for the majority, but I'm gonna save a little bit. So I'm gonna stick a little over to the side. I'm gonna grab a little more ultramarine blue and darken this large pile up just a bit. It's nice to have both of those tones in there though. And anytime it starts looking too blue, just know you can knock it down with a tiny bit of the burnt sienna. That burnt sienna has enough orange tone in it that it acts as a complement to the blue. So you can get some just really, really nice grays with it. Okay, I'm gonna come up here and just see what I've got. Kind of liking that. It's a couple of shades lighter than my original color, which is what I want. I don't mind some of that original dark showing through, and I like the little bit of vibration it gives. But I'm just going to pull some of this in. Lighten that cloud up just a bit. And it gives that cloud some really nice atmosphere in it, too. You know, you think about clouds, and they're ever-changing and moving, morphing. And so there, there are things, even in a big mass like this, there, there are things constantly happening. So just adding these gray tones in, I'm going to even lighten down a little more and pull a little more of that peachy tone in. So I'm pulling those two colors together for my wispy clouds that are up in the top. I'm going to add a little bit more still to them and pink that up just a bit with some alizarin. It's catching a little bit of the light too from the sunset, so I'm warming that up just a hair. And it kind of drips on over. And 
very softly meets that other little wispy area of clouds. I might even take my paper towel and just soften that. I really like Viva paper towels because they're most like cloth. If you don't have Viva, I recommend grab some old t-shirts and cut them up and use that. You want that soft cloth like feel. These clouds kind of merge over here. And I'm going to soften that wispy stuff down. Like I mentioned in the past, use what tools are necessary. There are no rights and wrongs. this together a little bit okay there's also that reflective color from the orange sunset I think we could use a little more of that in there so I'm going back to that same pile gonna pull a little more of the orange in a little more of the radiant violet that's pretty light so I'm gonna deepen it I'm gonna keep some of that but I'm gonna make a pile that's a little bit deeper too even pulling a little of the lizard in it. Yeah, so it's more of a salmon type color. It's lighter down here, gets a little deeper in this bottom of this cloud. I'm gonna put on a little bit of that on and I'm gonna rub it with the paper towel. I don't want any harsh lines. This is all soft. Almost just like I'm toning it a little bit, just to get a little. Now there's a bulge in this cloud right through here and we get a little bit of the darker blue tone, so I'm going to pull it back in. And it kind of comes up and over some of my orange through here as well. I'm going to strengthen a few of these edges as they come in front of those Little peaks of orange cloud that's back behind it will help the orange clouds stand out and receive back behind our big cloud mass a little better. Well, I think I'm going to lighten this strip just a hair. And one thing, now we're to the point with this that we're able to look at everything, even though it's not all finished. We've got our land toned somewhat the way we want it. So we can see how everything works together. That brush kind of just hit some of the texture on the canvas and the paint. I like that look a lot. 
soften this down just a bit right here. Okay, I'm liking that. A little bit of a ridge of the leaf is here. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to look at my mass of trees over here. I'm going to grab a little burnt sienna. And a little Parmenta Lysrian and a tiny bit of greenish umber. And notice how I'm holding my brush. By doing that, it allows my brush to catch these little pieces of texture here and there. And allows some of the color that we put on before to still peek through. And I really like that. I'm going to brighten this up a hair using that same peachy mixture that I've been using. In the... Not really worried about strong, distinct detail. I may pull a few of the tree trunks in. but just hints. And then little, little taps of color just to barely suggest there's some branches and things going on. And know that, that your shadow, and that's the thing about working with constantly working with photographs. You're just never going to see shadows the way they really are because a camera just does not capture them the way our eye does. And so you miss so much of what can go on in a shadow area. And it's subtle a lot of times, but in the same sense, it's very important. It gives your piece life. It gives your piece depth. And don't be afraid of these strong shadows. This is late, strong late afternoon light. So we're going to have, you know, some, some pretty strong darks in there. And then think about these geometric planes. So I've got a plane here, got a plane here. That's where your light's really going to catch across the tops of these. And it's gonna be really warm because this is late, late afternoon. If it gets too orange, you can knock that orange down with a little bit of your blue. And I kind of pull all this together. Now, back to my knife. I may pull a little knife texture in there. Really think about the base of this area. Push that shadow a little darker in there. And then I like, I see a little bit of a bush area that comes through here that's catching a little light. I like that. Just really subtle hints here and there of where light's catching. Get something too strong, just knock it with your brush. Because that knife does put pure pigment up there, so you, you've got to be mindful of that be catching a little light on some of the trees, some of the trunks. OK, 
okay? Now, our ground area, it's, it's so easy to, to focus so much on this. But remember, that's my story up here. I do see a little dark texture through here. I'm just barely going to let my brush drift across that. And what it is, there, there's a lot of stobs of stalks in this just sectioned off here and there as you go back through that field. So, again, in, you can rub it with your knife a little bit. I mean, with your paper towel, if you need to pull any of that down. I don't want any hard edges. So I can put that in there, bump here and there. I can also bring a little bit of the blue. There's a little bit of, it's kind of a dead grassy area where the grass has just lost all its color, but it has this interesting kind of blue-violet tone. So I'm gonna let a little of that drift in through here. Using that same mixture that I used in my clouds. A little bit in the rose. bit over here as well. Kind of in a hint that there's rows, but again, don't put too much emphasis on that because our rows all start to go together as they spread out. So I'm really basically using my same pile of colors in different ways in different locations. A little darker toward the field and toward the edge of the trees and then right where we get to the edge of the trees I have a little bit of bright tone I might pull in there and this is grassy so I'm gonna do some little short vertical strokes not too much emphasis just a hint that that's not a perfect Perfect, perfect straight edge. And that just kind of messes that edge up a little bit. Catch a little light, catch a little light. Now, one thing you haven't seen me do if you've watched these videos, some videos or something that I do quite often. So I love having this wall easel and I always stand when I paint. And the reason being is about every 15, 20 minutes, I walk across the room and I look at this painting from a distance. I also keep a little handheld mirror handy so I can look at my paintings in the mirror to check compositions, check problems that may be standing out more than I'd like. So I'm going to step back. Okay, the first thing I notice is I'm, I'm not happy with this line through here. So I'm going to get rid of that using a combination of all the colors I have down in the bottom. Funny how when you're right on top of it, it doesn't show as much, but I immediately, it caught my eye way too much as I stepped back. Now there is a bottom to a cloud right through here. So I can develop that shape a little bit more if I want. And let it drift out a little bit. I also think I'm going to give a little top edge to this piece. Give it a little bit of strength. I'm going to give some wispiness over here to this. I'm going to take that and rub with the paper towel again. I'm going to 
able to stay soft. So you have to decide kind of what shapes you like, what shapes bother you, what shapes detract. If it's pulling your eye in the wrong direction, adjust it. Little, little orange in there. Just rub. Okay, I'm also not sure I like this one, two, three up here. So I'm going to come up. I'll just, just tone that down a little bit. I think I like that better. So it looks more like a reflective color versus an actual shape. A little bottom to this cloud. A little bottom to this cloud. Step back again. Okay, my photo really light right here with the peach tone, so I'm gonna add that in, I think, and see what it looks like. So back to the cat orange, a little bit of alizarin crimson and white. And I'm just gonna catch some light. I'll even go a little bit lighter than that. Right through here. Really little bright spots right there. These are closest to my area of the sun that's going down, so it's really kind of catching them. Some little hints of cloud pieces through here. And I actually think uh, there's some grassy stuff in the front of this, but I really think I'm just going to leave that out. I don't, I don't think that I want that in there. Although, the more I look at it, the more I may add just a little. So I'm going to take a little burnt sienna. If I put it in there and I don't like it, I can always take it out. Burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. Just a hint of greenish umber. I'm using my evergreen brush again. I'm just going to flick 
some of this in. Now, when you lay grass in, lift and pull. That gives you that nice little tapered edge. Don't let it all be the same length. Don't let it all go the same direction. Maybe some broken pieces. Some of this has a little stuff growing on it. Greenish umber. I'll taper as it goes. Like that, I think I'll leave it. Kind of balances out the tree mass on the left. And I'm thinking I may even go on and add a little more over here. So I'm not going to do a straight across all the way. I'm going to open and shut in some places. You can even have a little texture in this area if you'd like, since it's closest to us. does kind of help give me a little distance in my painting. Warm it up just a little bit more. Another greenish umber. So these are last year's weeds and bushes, so they're broken and falling and kind of the last little bits hanging on, so. Let them be what they are. that so here's my piece I hope that you've gotten something out of painting this with me I hope you'll share your pieces with me as you finish them I hope you'll come back to my channel more for more videos I'm gonna take a picture of this and post it at the end of the video so you can see it a little more up close and get it in better light but I hope you keep painting I hope you stay well and stay safe and check me out on my website, carolrourke.com. Thanks, guys.